Uh, three, two, one. So <laughs> obviously the Democrats have had no break, I would say, and um, making a mockery of themselves um, over and over again. Yeah. Uh, you have Northman with blackface or KKK. Uh, you have Fairfax with uh, rape allegations. Uh, you have another Democrat, uh, third in line in Virginia right. for another blackface. Right. And now you have uh, faking uh, race crimes. Well, hate crimes, sorry. But I guess Northam, he's, he's like uh, really happy that this this took off. Yeah. He's yeah. Na- his name's been out of the news ever since <laughs> Jesse Smollett entered the news. So I, I think um, I, I was kind of waiting to see, like, what's going to replace this? Uh, like, what's going to be the next distraction in the media to show to, like, uh, make this disappear? Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure, like, he's begging, like, there's this guy in going to run against uh, Obama some time ago. I forgot his name, but he, it turned out he, he impregnated like one of the news reporters or one of his aides or something like that. And they found him uh, going to meet her at some kind of a motel. And uh, he acknowledged that that happened, but during the, like the Olympics in China. So while the news is focused on like, like they don't really want to go back to that story. They, they like, they've got the Olympics to cover here. Right. right. He found that to be a good opportune time to come out and, and yeah, this, this happened. Um, so it's interesting how sometimes when these things happen, like what is, what else are they disguising? Um, it's like a weird Ted offensive where they do the attack on, on, uh, on their like uh, most sacred holiday and the attack occurs under that. Um, but you don't know, like, um, so with the news, you'll find, uh, they find like these kinds of attacks and they kind of sneak away everything else they want to brush under the table. You could say right there, you know, and different people have different theories. I mean, it, it does seem coincidental that a lot of this stuff comes out at the time that it does. And you would think that there's so many other important issues around the world, you know, and what's going on and in Syria or whatever, you know, maybe that's a big, but no, it's like right. we're, we're, we're covering <laughs> Jesse Smollett and his uh, claim that he was attacked by two, two men. Right. Uh, Two MAGA hat wearing men. If only he wore a MAGA hat, could he have uh, received um, some kind of altercation, right? Uh, If he's looking to get beaten up, right, for just wearing, just for being you or just wearing a red hat, MAGA hat, um, that's all he had to do. Mm -hmm. Go down the south side of Chicago where all the other crime is happening and see how long you survive. You see videos like that all the time. I mean, um, it, you know, it's immediately, it's like you're wearing a swastika on your t-shirt. Right. It's basically the equivalent <clears throat> and you're looking for a fight as soon as you wear it. Right. Um, so I think this kind of showcases how, how I see it as a um, way how desperate they are. And they've been desperate for like two years now to find like a boogeyman. Uh, how desperate they are to find, to justify their field politics, their identity politics, to kind of make themselves relevant. The Democratic Party. Uh, they don't really have any good uh, talking points. You have uh, uh, Cortez with her new deal, Green Deal, right? Stopping cows from farting or something like that. So they don't really have any good <clears throat> ideas or economic progress or anything like that. All they have is just to uh, like create strife to tensions through uh, racial groups right. and make themselves kind of like we're the defenders of these kind of minority racial groups. So side with us. And help us maintain political powers, powers by uh, voting for us. I wonder why they go to such lengths to do that. Uh, I it, it's possible that they perceive that um, minority groups are moving away from the Democratic Party, and they're saying, "No, no, stay. Look at look at all these terrible things that are happening to you because of Trump, right? Because he's encouraging all these people to attack you." And um, yet, I you know they they do polls and and uh, just offhand, you know, I think I saw one where like Latinos were uh, growing in support of Trump because um, of, of the better economy and everything. So you, you see something like that and they may, yeah, maybe they're, they're saying, well, we got to go this other, other route. It's like with um, it's the equivalent. It's the democratic equivalent of like what the Republicans do with pro-lifers. You know, they say, Oh, but yeah, we supported all these terrible things, but we're the pro-life party. So you got to vote for us, you know? <laughs> right. I do know a lot of Bolivians, like Northern Virginia is full of them. A large community. I think. Um, I think the saying goes that they're trying to get off. They're trying to to stop and migrate to New York City, but got off on New York Avenue in DC and thought this was it. <laughs> uh, bad with directions sometimes. 
Um, but I know a lot of them are very pro-Trump, uh, very conservative. Uh, they like that he's a businessman. And uh, I guess for that alone, they, they see it different from like Bolivian politics or Evo Morales and a lot of other people down there. Um, like if you have somebody in Bolivia, for example, that wants to create change or uh, for the better man, you could say, and people do vote for him. What his opposition would do is, well, they'll just combine their votes together and then beat him. And then they know that they're not going to be uh, reelected because uh, it's a farce in the way that they, they, they stole that election by combining the votes against somebody who, who would have won otherwise. Um, so for the next four years, they just uh, fake projects and steal all the money for the next couple of years. Mm. Right. So it's a great uh, get rich scheme for <laughs> politics in Bolivia. Yeah, and and the the problem down there is they don't have as much wealth to confiscate as we do. Right. So <laughs> it, our politicians can confiscate, so so they can kind of hide it more, right? Right. Because there's so much more to steal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and I think they were saying that this guy Jesse Mullet, the Smollett, was uh, saying that he was doing it for pay promotion. He wasn't getting paid enough or something like that. He was going to get cut off. He gets paid like $400,000 or 60000 per episode on The Empire. I don't know what that show is about. I have no interest. In- <laughs> I watched a couple episodes when it first came out, believe it or not. And, um, it, you know. Is it's it a musical? Like, it's, it, it's like a musical. There's yeah. a lot of singing. But there's also an element of um, it's a continuing soap uh, opera mm-hmm. sort of you know they got the family and they're following and tracking them through their various uh yeah you know it's it's not up my it's not up my alley yeah <laughs> uh i can't really imagine uh maga people white people are really watching musicals <laughs> either so or be so invested that they would recognize them in chicago at like two in the morning in a polar vortex right uh, environment and say, yeah, that's the Empire guy. Yeah, right. man, I, I hate that show. Yeah, <laughs> I hate the way the season's going. Well, it's a predominantly African American cast, so right. <laughs> you know, of course, uh, yeah, there's just no chance that your typical MAGA person is watching that. Show. Right. <laughs> I've I've never heard of it until this happened. Um, so I think it's uh, the timeline is interesting. Well, the current events, all this stuff. And right. So let's go over the timeline here because we can kind of figure out like maybe. It wasn't for uh, making money because this guy slowed it. He doesn't have kids. He doesn't have a family. Um, not to say that having a family or having kids uh, doesn't make you rich. I think uh, people find clever ways to be more efficient at being capitalists when they have kids. Um, and kids are like your riches anyways, right? Right. Yeah. Your, our, well, our real wealth is in the children. Right. So. Ding. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> Um, so you have here on January 15th, Kamala Harris and Jesse Smollett uh, attend a uh, Los Angeles uh, Mr. Martin Luther King. I don't really say doctor because he plagiarized his thesis. Like up to like some, somebody was doing like this whole research on the thesis and found like up to like 70% of it was plagiarized. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's still going through all of it. Hmm. So like the university that he graduated from with the thesis, he apparently copied another student's thesis uh, like a couple years before him. Uh, and this is before the engineer or something like that. So nobody really would, would cross-reference any of this stuff. But wow. on display with their, where his thesis is at that university somewhere up in New England, they put like a little asterisk, like this could be uh, been copied or something like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, that started this horrible trend of everybody needing to be called Dr. Se- I right. think even David Duke said it. he's like Dr. David. It's like, dude, you got a fake... <laughs> Degree from some random place, you know. It's very easy now to make a, a college, a Marxist college university anyways. Get accredited by the, the state, advocate for the state, boom, get a doctor in underwater basket weaving <laughs> uh, feminist uh, dance therapy or something. Uh, that's the most bullshit degree I've ever heard of. Um, it, gender real, studies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the whole woman's sex, sex. I can't imagine any guy going through that as like taking this like, yes, I am your pressure. Yes, I am who is causing this uh, victim of pain. Um, I will, you know, better myself by getting this degree. Um, so he tends this rally with uh, Kamala Harris. She's the uh, prosecutor, right? The one who's uh, running for office? Correct. Right. She's put a lot of people in jail for victimless crimes. Right. Yes. It's, it's, isn't she the one saying that she smoked pot? It, yes, in right. uh, college, and she went to college in 1986. Right, and she said I was smoking pot while I was listening to Tupac and uh, Snoop 
Right. You know, like somebody who was cool. <laughs> and yet they weren't out yet. They weren't out. They college. came out like in 1991 or something like right. that. Uh, it's like that me is like, hello, cool kids. <laughs> 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 That's really sad. And <clears throat> it's still come up relevant to this in a second. So you have uh, Harris Booker Scott. They introduce a bill to make lynching a federal hate crime. Interesting because uh, it's kind of like reminds me of uh, a lot of the child labor laws that they have on the books. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this and shouldn't be doing that. You should have weekends off or a certain number of hours. A lot of the stuff that we enjoy, of course, came from the market, right? The market paved the way, creating the nine to five weekends off, um, making it uh, sustainable for families to have income. They don't have their kids don't have to go through work themselves. Right. And then the labor market, uh, the unions come in. And then uh, legislate into law what capitalists were already doing and try to take credit for it. Right. right? And you find uh, their attempt to pass a lynching act in the House, trying to take credit for maybe you could say why well, we haven't had lynchings maybe in the past couple of decades. Right. Yeah. The uh, the idea of a lynching too. They they want to. Yeah, everybody's against that. Right. Yeah. But, it's but not a, this right, legislation, right. who knows what it might act like. I'm sure that they, they supported this. Uh, you know, there's a, one story from Michigan State University. It says, all it took was one misplaced item in an entire campus what went into a racial uproar. MSU President Lou Anna Simon released a statement commend, commending one student for her courage in reporting a, quote, racial incident involving a noose on campus. There was just one problem. The news turned out to be a lost shoelace, which university spokesman Jason Coney said was not directed at any individual. So right. <laughs> somebody like lost a shoelace and then put it up on a tree so that somebody else, because people do that. Like you lose yeah. a, you, you lose a glove and somebody puts it up somewhere that you'll see it maybe. Right. When I did a road trip across historic Route 66, there's this, uh, at least an abandoned stretch of highway, it's ghost towns, uh, deserts, uh, uh, there was a, like a huge tree, like a bush of a tree. People would tie shoes on there, which is kind of weird, kind of creepy, kind of like a sewer. Like I feel like I stumbled into like a sewer killer lair. Yeah. Um, like this is what they collect. Just the girls or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up to the side of the road. Like I thought I saw something weird, and I see like a huge tree collection of just shoes that's tied on every branch, different kinds of shoes. Um, hmm. Yeah. Well, not well. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so you find lynching and the definition. Of lynching is a hanging of someone without a legal trial, right? Uh, so it's not specifically a black thing. These things happened in the past. Uh, you can say this stuff happened in the not so wild, wild west sometimes. Um, they didn't really have much crime. I don't want to say like it would happen frequently, but you do have that as the definition of uh, vigilante justice without trial, you could say. Uh, it's not just exclusively a black thing. In the South, uh, yeah, in, in uh, Louisiana, it happened to like Hungarian and Italian immigrants too. From right. time, you know, not not nearly as often as as African Americans, obviously. But right, uh, and that's and that's the defi- definition for it. And this sort of stuff happens, uh, you know, worldwide. You know, it's not just exclusive to an American thing. Uh, so December nineteenth, the Senate passes the Lynching Act, but the House fails to vote on it. Uh, this January 21st, Kamala Harris announces her bid for presidency. The next day, Smullett receives a letter co- containing unknown white powdery substance. Turns out it was ibuprofen. And, of course, with all this stuff happening now, this guy sent it to himself. I'm saying it out there. He sent it to himself. Right. Um, <clears throat> when, when the news story broke out that... He did this, like this. This was happening to him. Not the letter, but like, uh, like he, you know, he was attacked. Uh, the very same day, it's like, well, yeah, b- b- bullshit. Because there's the same thing kind of happened maybe two years ago to this uh, guy who, who's like a, a gay guy coming out of a club or something like that over a bar in San Francisco or California, somewhere in California. And so, like, two guys wearing MAGA hats attacked him, and uh, he's cut up, bleeding, and he went to the hospital. But it's weird that he didn't go to the nearby hospital. He went to one like really far away to kind of give him time to kind of maybe create this kind of um, incident himself. This no- another fake crime. Uh, police found no way to collaborate his story, uh, mm. but he couldn't find a way to collaborate himself either. And it turned out he kind of made it all up. Mm. Um, 
And so I've kind of posted that. It's like there's a history in the past two years of number of fake hate crimes, and this one seemed too good to be true. Uh, again, Polar Vortex, Vot- Vot- you have a uh, MAGA hat, two guys coming out there. Uh, and I would really don't really suspect most people kind of watch Empire. I've never heard of it again until right. this came out. Uh, and then you had like immediately the same day or the next day, like he wouldn't uh, let the, the cops see his phone to verify the stories. I mean, I don't trust cops myself, but you know, you're putting yourself for yourself in the situation where you're calling on to them for help. You want them to investigate. Right, right. So they got to investigate it. Right. Um, and then you have um, on the 29th, that's when uh, the attack he claimed happened, right? Well, well <laughs> the attack on himself. Uh, <laughs> the attack on where he uh you had the reverse nigerian scam where you hire them to like <laughs> physically scam you in, in, in a way right yeah uh two nigerians uh to beat you up pour bleach on you and put a noose around your neck and make sure that your subway sandwich is still intact <laughs> as you kind of run off uh, in the middle of the night uh makes I was, sense. yeah makes sense yeah uh it's interesting how I was reading like some of the stuff before this that originally some of the idea was like maybe getting a gasoline, pour gasoline on him, but maybe he thought that'd be too much. It's like, no, no, bleach is better. You know, bleach kind of resembles white people, like milk. You know? Right. Yeah. We're going to clean you up. We're going to clean you up. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How, what a bizarre, I've never even heard of that being a thing that anybody would do. Right. Is use bleach. Right. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like think like what's going to this guy's mind when he's doing this sort of stuff. And like he's, he's calling, hey, um, I'm making four hundred thousand dollars already, uh, sixty thousand an episode. I want to make myself relevant. Uh, I need your guys' help because apparently they work with him on Empire or something like that. Uh, and so yeah, you know what? We'll help you out. He cuts him a check for thirty five hundred dollars for like fitness, nutritional uh, regimen training or something like that. And so he kind of goes, I can't imagine how that conversation would go. And say, okay, what you're gonna do next is uh, you're gonna beat me up outside of a subway coming home uh and they're like yeah yeah we'll do that it's like dude i mean not the fact that there's cameras everywhere uh <laughs> in chicago but i can't imagine how even the nigerians will get involved with this and say yeah this makes perfect sense this makes perfect sense yeah what could go wrong um and tying this back to harris and her attempt to kind of create uh lynching a federal crime and this kind of stuff kind of happens and he has a connection with her and he's also an activist himself right seems to be like another way to kind of pass legislation it's kind of like a reichstag burning so like hitler said that the jews burn the reichstag and turns out it was the germans themselves and they were able to pass laws to persecute jews um and in the same kind of vein that they want to create this kind of legislation this act so they kind of have to fake an attack so they can have this able to to pass right uh it seems to be in the same kind of um uh, fake it's kind of like emperor palpatine kind of level of politics yeah if only i guess they their entire bet was assuming that the guys the two guys nigerians weren't discovered like that was that hinged on everything because you see smollett where a, prior to the them discovering that it was the brothers he was willing to charge the two men who were supposedly the attackers uh, it, that and because the police approached him and said we found two men, we're right. willing to charge him, and then once he found out it was the the actual guys who he he paid, he then relented and said no I don't I don't want him, <clears throat> and that's how you know that he was willing to charge somebody who didn't do anything right all, all out on that interview that he did afterwards, and just like just like pouring his emotions into it like like he was really there like this really like for him I guess. He's an actor, right? It's I have, not that they don't want to believe. Right. It's that they don't care. They don't care. He right, has yeah. like some some like Hamlet style. I have a I have a I have a general rule. I just don't trust actors. Uh, anyone who's took taken an acting class, I just don't trust them. Um, I, I don't care who. I just my my general number one rule um, for for anyone out there because they can they can fake their emotions, right? They can fake uh, being in a place, a state that uh, that they've never been to, and just kind of like. You just live it out like it actually happened. And, and they practice that, right? And this guy, as an actor, practices pretending to be something that he's not. And then you see this entire interview where it's like kind of spoon-fed 
you know, to kind of no no questions and the veracity, like you know, like what actually happened or anything like that. Um, and not to say like, hey, there's an attack that happened to me, you shouldn't believe him or something like that. But like in the scope of the sort of things and all the stuff that kind of really came out even on the next day, you, you should question. Yeah. Um, that his narrative wasn't questioned, right? Um, and That's like you're where saying, the media comes in, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and if it was uh, two other white guys that they say like, yeah, uh, we found some people that could probably the master the description, he would have definitely lynched them. Uh, right, right. Um, just like the media lynched uh, the MAGA kid, Covington Catholic, right? Police, yeah, yeah. We, we don't know evidence, right? Um, it was like um, a lynching of his of his life. His future career, everything. Kick him out of his school, expel him. Yeah, uh, he's a sixteen-year-old kid, right? Uh, and then the evidence comes out, and it's like, yeah, nobody ever said build a wall. Nobody ever was chanting any of this sort of stuff. Um, and then the media is like, all right, you know, these things happen, and just kind of brushes it off, right? And I'm thinking that's kind of what's going to happen now. The the next thing is probably going to be, uh, I don't know what the next thing, maybe a fake uh, gun attack or something like that, because if you see. What kind of uh, legislation they're trying to pass with this? It makes me also curious to wonder, like, what other legislations that the Democrats have passed um, under right. a false pretense of an attack that they may have set up? That's what, yeah, your your mind always gets to racing when you think about history and you think about the lack of information that we had back then. Right. And and what how much information we have today, you know, so we can quickly figure these things out. Whereas they didn't have cameras back in the day. You right. Know, they didn't have, so there was no corroboration for any of this stuff. And that's, uh, that's what be- begins to, you know, create more skepticism. But I mean, at the end of the day, like the media looks at this case and th- there's no red flags going off in their, their minds, you know, that, um, Robin Wright or, uh, the, the, um, media, person that was communicating there with jesse smollett uh he she just you can tell that she's internalizing everything he's saying and fully believes it yeah and doesn't ask any difficult questions None. just lets him expound All right um and expound in a way to kind of say like racism is like full-on freight train running through america and things are kind of a horrible environment if you're a lgb uh or a minority uh in in this country right a place where everyone in the world wants to come to if it's such a horrible place you know why is this like this gravitational pull of <laughs> still of, of every single person still wanting to come to here right yeah um but it, of course it's um it's a racist attack that it does right a racist uh hate crime not not that the hate crime itself was racist but in, in the way that he was still trying to uh create uh, fire between races, between whites, uh, Europeans, and, and African Americans, and trying to create this rift, trying to make it seem like it's still like this, just like hatred going on between them. Uh, that he would go out there and like say, yeah, you yeah, kind of can tell, like underneath of the eyes, like you know, it's, it's kind of white. <laughs> um, and for the media uh, to kind of jump on board with that, because everything they've kind of uh, investigated has turned out to be false. Right, so like they're they're looking for at least something <laughs> to right. save face, and God forbid there really was a real attack where right. like two white supremacists attack. But you, it's just that for for whatever reason, you just don't seem to hear a lot about those stories when they or if they do happen, you would think that the media would go crazy. Right, so they must not be happening as often. <laughs> right, um, they did have that kid in Chicago about a two years ago. Uh, he had uh, mental issues. He was like a mentally challenged kid. And you had uh, four black guys uh, kidnap him. Uh, Chowing it out like, you're, you know, you're fucking white. You know, fuck a Trump. Yeah. Uh, they bound him, uh, gagged him. Uh, they took out a razor blade, started cutting into him. Uh, and this videotaped case, it. Right? Videotaped it, right. Put yeah. it on Facebook <laughs> live. Um, you know, that's... That's a hate crime. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, things kind of passed over. That was kind of big maybe for like a, a week or two. And then the media just kind of finds something else. And to I think cover. to some degree this Jesse Smollett is a hate crime, too, because you look at the way that he portrays the typical MAGA hat person. Right. And now it's this demonic person who attacks people, you know, in the street. Right. And and so he, he's able to do exactly what he's saying they did to him, to everybody else. And um, and. 
you know, he gets to be the victim somehow. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a Republican. Um, but at the same time, I want to look at like the, the arguments that you have against oppositions, right? Uh, if you're making up arguments like, hey, well, they're, they're racist. It's like, well, uh, what, what, tell me what, what it is that they did that was racist, right? Where was this racist racial hatred, right? Oh, because they're wearing a hat. Um, it's like, uh, that lady at the feminist rally is like, well, you, you can't wear black, uh, cause you're, you're white. Um, and I find, uh, I guess things that are actual real race, race crimes, or you could say a racial hatred, it kind of makes, belittles it, right? It makes it like, uh, mean nothing if you say everything is racism, uh, or everything is sexism. Right. Everything's misogynistic. Uh, and everything's misogynistic. You can't point what is not misogynistic. It makes, uh, it lack any kind of power or kind of, uh, definition to it. Um, I find racism to be defined as hatred for another person's skin color. But when I think about that stuff, like, even if it is hatred, I don't really, f- like, if someone has a hatred towards me, <laughs> you're, you're going to find assholes everywhere that's going to hate you and not like you for any kind of given reason. I don't like what you wore. When I was in middle school, uh, I beat up a kid because he wore corduroys. Uh, you know, it's, I thought that was a fashion hate crime. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to find... <laughs> <laughs> that'll learn them yeah. that'll teach them yeah you're, you're gonna find the cost of the admission of living in a world in which you have finite resources and you have to interact with other people that you're gonna run into people who don't like you when i was in boot camp uh that's one thing we all learned most of us don't like each other but we're gonna have to learn how to get along uh to get through this several weeks months of training um and it's not like this kumbaya where everyone will love to, to get along with each other um but that's like the beauty of, you could say, capitalism, one pencil. It's in a way, people do get along to get things done. Right. Um, so I, I think uh, they make a big thing about people not liking each other or hating each other. You know, you find uh, like the, the baker guy, the Christian baker. He told the, the gay couple, like, yeah, I'll make you a cake. I'll sell you a cake. I just won't make the kind of cake you want me to make. Right. He wasn't saying, like, I hate you so much. Get right. out of my store. I won't sell you a goddamn thing. Um <laughs> Yeah, the I was watching this show on Netflix, and uh, they they are portraying this older woman as uh, anti-gay because she she doesn't agree with uh, gay marriage. Her son's getting married and and to another man, and she doesn't like it. And you know the way that this stuff is portrayed in the media and in entertainment is that well, she's just bad, she's just evil, and um, she's a hater. And it's a way that we we do this weird. Um, calculus every time somebody talks about any issue or it's well they're they're one of the bad guys i'm one of the good guys because i believe in xyz right and it's uh and so once if she does something to somebody at that point well it's become a hate crime you know as opposed to just it's a crime you know and we talk a lot about this in the libertarian circle yeah when it comes to what constitutes a crime are these people just depraved or are they did they just violate your right your property rights right you know who cares why they did it right do they not like people of whatever there's a million reasons why you could yeah like you said if somebody wears corduroy you know right yeah (laughs) i mean nothing is quite as bad as that i agree yeah exactly um i mean i'm a changed man now (laughs) uh uh but there's there's a infinite reasons why anyone might not like another person right uh these are not things to like take things uh personally uh that's just the the way things are Uh, i think um not being um i guess safeguarded from bad things people can say about you uh it's caused people to feel of like you know like having your feelings hurt to be a new form of crime um and which is what's kicking off in england Right. If there's someone that says something that hurts your feelings, uh, report it to the cops. Speech crime. Speech crime. Yeah. Uh, and they'll handle it. They'll go and knock on the person's uh, uh, door and maybe possibly arrest them for that. Right. Um, hate speech. So I think it's kind of makes people weaker instead of uh, growing tough skin and learning how to talk back and learning how to form arguments or, uh, with these sort of things. Uh, and of course, like they say, well, if it's, if it's, uh, if you're not along with this sort of stuff, it's because you're phobic, right? Right. Yeah, there's this immediate assumption of bad intentions on yeah. your part. You know, well, you must not be on with the program that right. we've assembled here. Right. Which is, 
you know, we're all social justice warriors. We know what's right. And, um, you know, Tom Woods recently had a guest on his show who was a former Marxist and he, he couldn't get quite get along with the, uh, current naming gender trend. And, uh, they, they destroyed him at his college. And so, so, so much that he actually became a libertarian, which was good, <laughs> <laughs> which is a win, but hopefully they would do that with everybody. But the point is, I mean, they, they are rigorous in defending these, these, uh, systems of thought that they have. Right. Hoppe was once uh, a communist. Hmm. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Until he came across these arguments like this makes, this is rational. <laughs> <laughs> like Ayn Rand, this is rational. <laughs> I imagine like her waking up one morning and like has bed hair, looks in the mirror, and like, oh my god, this is irrational. <laughs> <laughs> um, so rest, rest of the timeline, everybody knows. Yeah. Now he made it up. Uh, he's uh, he's arrested right now. Uh, let go on a hundred thousand dollar bond, so paying like ten thousand dollars of it. <clears throat> he's thirty six years old, been charged with disorderly conduct. A class four felony carries a sentence up to three years in prison. Uh, and a lot of people sometimes say, well, you know, if you're going to fake something, like you have a lot of fake uh, rape reports. Right. And so like something that would cause someone to be in jail for a long time. And so like they say, oh, the punishment should fit the crime. What about those who make fake accusations? So they also fit the punishment of that crime. Uh, and the question, I think the libertarian question and cap question would be, um, is hate crime really a crime right um i mean hate itself appears to be just a form of thought or speech so that's how it manifests right, right. So, i hate anime you know right arrest me yeah well you know there's certain parts <laughs> of the internet that would but yeah that so that's the issue and um you know we we don't really believe that there is anything besides a property that can really be be violated so how do you how do you get to that point it's we're so far from that though right where you know in this society i mean there's there's discussions about men's ray and um the various you know judicial issues that uh, affect whether people are you know what what's their wh what kind of uh state of mind were they when they committed this crime right you know and things like that and and so there's so much that goes on today that is just un unrelated to property and whether somebody's actually engaging in violence right I think uh, you're right. It does do a great distraction on whether there was an actual violation of property rights, uh, which is the only crime, right? I think crime is defined as a violation of property rights. Law exists then to make uh, the victim whole, right? Have those reparations. Uh, and if hating someone, hating someone itself is not a crime. Uh, if there was like, a, like a, you want someone's property and burn a cross, that's trespassing. You know, that's just a lot of things going on there. There's, there's property rights violations going on there. Hitting someone, you know, um, those are property rights violations. I would say uh, there's an interesting thing that uh, someone in the group brought up, though, that all property violations are, in a way, uh, hate crimes. Yeah. So you, you would have to hate the person to uh, trespass on their property or to break their window. Um or to, to do like malevolent things to that person. Yeah. I wonder about, there. I, mean, I just kind of thought of this, but so when you think about intimidation, so intimidation can come in different forms. So you can say, you know, a mob guy steps in, uh, knocks on your front door and says, you know, it'd be a good thing for you if you uh, started giving me $1,000 a month. Or, uh, you know, I'd really hate to see what happened to your, your wife and family if you, know, you didn't. And uh, so that constitutes like a threat. Right. And, and so he comes, you know, a month later and shows up with, you know, he wants his money. I would say at that point, you're, you're entitled to uh, shoot him. You know, if, right. he, if he's, if he's coming at you with that type of a threat. Right. He's using other people as a means to the end to, uh, initiate violence on your behalf, on, right. on them. And this could be, uh, you can group this as a criminal conspiracy. Right. right. So this is how you can group also people who like, uh, Hitler, who did he kill? Right. Physically, nobody. Right. He had. He was part of the of a criminal conspiracy of using others as a means to the end of initiating violence. Right, and that's how you can kind of group them all together. So I think the cross burning. So you, somebody's burning a cross near property. I think you are because there is intimidation too. Right. It's not just burning your lawn. Or right. Something, so, I think um, the the law is so like in a libertarian society. Yeah, clear property rights violation. 
maybe from there you can go into uh, motive, but not for uh, the person adjudicating the case, but maybe for the victim, for them to make a decision and how far sometimes things can go like up to three years or up to 500,000 to see how far yeah. of that uh, they want to have the perpetrator uh, make them feel whole. All right. All right. It was an accident. All right. You didn't know what was going on. Yeah, dude, you dude, no way. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, like uh you can say like there's also property right violations when you go when you're driving a car and you hit somebody, right? Not that that's full of ang- like hate, right? It was an accident, but negligence. Negligence, yeah. right? You can remove the whole motive, right? That's a clear property rights violation. You uh destroyed my car, yeah. right? Um that is the weird thing is that with hate crimes, the actual damage done can be so so minute. And yet, because, I mean, he had like a little scratch on it. Right. And, and if it had been real, it still would have been minute. And yet, you know, you could have, you could get into a car and be blackout drunk and then crash into an entire family and kill them right. all. Right. Or, or maybe he had, he had a seizure, right? And it's like, okay. Sure. Uh, maybe not, not, not family killed, but, you know, all right, my car got totally had a seizure. All right, you know, I'll just do minimum damage just to make my car recoup, you know, take care of yourself, right? Um, but with this guy and what he was aiming for, you can say that it could have been party to a criminal conspiracy to create riots, a uh, criminal conspiracy to have caused more harm uh, in, in Chicago or other places in which you'll, you'll have uh, race fights, right. and things like that, right? And that's kind of what he was kind of going for, uh, making up these stories, saying, like, white people are the devil, like that uh, uh, animal detective with Jim Carrey, uh, Asuga Wonka or something like that, the white devil. Um, so like at what point was the, uh, I would say that, I don't know if, uh, if his involvement with that could be property rights violation of a criminal conspiracy. Right. So then you talk about, yes, how far does speech cause you to engage in violence? You know? Mm -hmm. So if, if I say that, yeah, I, I would wonder about, um, if I lie about something and then that causes a bunch of other people to be hurt irrespective of my actions yeah how much how much control over those people calling a a, a fake fire and people are like oh fuck you know and then running and trampling over each other hey i just said uh fire sure uh i didn't force you to trample over everyone else right yeah um and that's all on you i would say ultimately that the property does determine how so if uh, these these violent interactions you're saying you know you're referring to happen on someone's property, then that person's technically um, in a, in a position to say no, um, you can't you can't battle on my you know right. on my property or we're not I'm gonna going to ensure that none of you people uh, engage in violence and uh, that's just the rules on my property right right so maybe that's a way I don't know to clarify it somewhat but <laughs> in the meantime you have a. Uh... Because you have land that government wouldn't let the locals here privatize. Right. You have like Westboro Baptist Church be able to come around and you can say hate <laughs> on people, right? Right. In their face uh, when they have funerals um, at, at a very other uh, intersection. Um, you know, that's uh, the nature of uh, the Leviathan. Yeah, the, free, the idea of free speech, you know, when we talk about, well, there would be no free speech on someone else. You can't just go into somebody's property and say, you're a dirtbag, you're right. scum. Yeah. <laughs> I have free speech rights. I'm in your home, though. Right. So. Spray paints, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, yeah, that is one of the problems there. But it's, um, yeah, there, there were some good questions that, uh, that you received about this issue. So I was fascinated by some of these. I mean, um, you know, one, so are hate crimes real crimes? And if so, who's the victim? Was, was one comment. Right. Um, and if it's hating someone, hating someone isn't a crime. It's just a physical transgression. Yeah. Like in this case with uh, Smullett, um, who's the victim? There's no victim. Um, was there an altercation? It was uh, consensual. He uh, pre-hearsed, rehearsed this with his two Nigerians to beat him up, put a noose around his neck uh, for two hours, right? Till later, till the cop shows up, he still had it on his neck just to show them it was there. See? Right? See? See? <laughs> <laughs> they did that to me. The um, well, you know, you could say. I mean, if you're, if we're going to talk in these terms, who's the victim? 
It's uh, the MAGA, MAGA hat wearing yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you want to, in this society, in the way that it's structured, uh, the victim would be uh, white people. The victims would be uh, anyone who's, uh, well, they make it seem like only white people can commit it, right? They, make, they never make it seem like black people are incapable of right. uh, committing uh, hate crimes. Jews are incapable of committing hate crimes. Muslims are incapable of committing hate crimes. Uh, we have a whole entire list here. <laughs> entire list. Uh, you have uh, a Muslim woman at a university in November 2016. She received uh, national attention from the Washington Post. She claimed that a drunk 20-something-year-old man threatened to light her on fire. She didn't remove her hijab. And uh, the university condemned the attack, which turned out to be a hoax. Um, you have a uh, you know, bisexual student fix, uh, Trump-inspired hate crime. You have Taylor Volk, an openly bisexual senior at North Park University, claimed to be the target of hateful notes and emails following Trump's election in November 2016. And he told NBC that, I just want them to stop. When, But when the them referenced by Volk turned out to be herself, <laughs> or them, wow, uh, the whole thing was fabricated. Uh, and you have this going on and on. You have a Philadelphia woman, Ashley Boyer, claimed in November 16 that she was harassed at a gas station by white Trump supporting males, one who pulled a weapon on her. Wow. All right. That's a hell of a claim. Especially yeah. at a gas station. You think there'd be cameras there, right? <laughs> Boyer claimed that the men proceeded to talk about the election and how they're glad that they don't have to deal with her much longer. <laughs> Trump's in office. <laughs> the, the same guy, Trump, who says all the time, uh, you know, we're doing really good for the blacks. Like, uh, you know, he always talks about how we're helping everybody, yeah. including all the minorities. And why would he say that if he really hated them? And right. You know? I think he got an award for like helping black people some time ago as well. You know, he's got Mike Tyson also supporting him. He's, um, yeah. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a petty thing to kind of go after those things. Like they have no arguments. So the only thing they have is this feels like he doesn't like them. He doesn't like us. Yeah. I would think if he was a true racist, he would say, no, these people, we don't want them to do well. Right. We want them to do bad. Right. So they'll, they'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Just, there was a story in uh, Brazil. So it's a worldwide phenomenon. Woman, woman with carved swastika faked her attack. Police conclude the woman, a young student from Porto Alegre, will be charged with falsely reporting a crime. The student had associated the alleged attack to the fact that in the day after the election's first round, she was carrying a backpack with stickers with the colors of the LGBT movement and the words uh, it translated into English, not him, as a protest against Jair Bolsonaro. Jair, that's uh, probably probably not right, but you know, yeah. the Portuguese isn't so yeah. hot. So, but uh, Are Portuguese considered Latin? Yeah, yeah, Iberian. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah. It's yeah, it's one of the romance. Yeah, languages, I guess yeah. so. I guess they're Latinos. It's just a world encompassing word. Uh, yeah, uh, even in Brazil. Where was this? In um, Porto Alegre, uh, the Rio Grande police. Yeah. So, weird. Yeah. Like I expect a lot of this stuff kind of happen in like in the United States. It's weird. It's kind of moving forward to he's, like other places. Bolsonaro is perceived. You know, they're doing a lot of the same things. They're yeah. saying he's a Nazi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it right. is. I would say it's most like a European country. Um, like uh, Argentina is mostly a European country. Cuba is a European country. Like uh, 70, 80 percent ethnicity wise European. Um, Dominican Republic on the same island with Haiti, mostly European. Um, right. So going down this uh, this list, you have uh, white men rob Muslim woman of her jo- job and her wallet. Oh, I was, I was way off, by the way. Oh. Uh, let me see. That, that's in, oh, uh, that's in the far south of Brazil. Okay. So not anywhere near these other, uh, just in case there's any Brazilians who are watching. Right. I'm incredibly disappointed <laughs> with, with, our, with our geographic skills. <laughs> Uh, wrong location, vicinity of a fake hoax. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have uh, an interesting one. You have a church organizes uh, vandalism against own church. All right. This is, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. You have a drunk right. white man attack Muslim woman in a story that never happened. Uh, in Texas, you had David Williams set his own car on fire and painted that, you know, uh, black. Anyways, derogatory terms. And uh, it turns out he, he did it himself, this black guy. Uh, you have on and on uh, for over two years, 
Uh, and you can say that, uh, again, technology helps to kind of bring this stuff a lot more to light of all this kind of uh, fake hate crimes going on. And I have to wonder, uh, one, that America here, it's a pretty good country for uh, people to want to come to. And that if you really want to feel oppressed, you kind of have to hire other people to oppress you or to oppress yourself in a fake hoax attack. Um, and that is not as a rampant <clears throat> as the left or Democrats want to make it to seem. Uh, but I want to also want to know, like, why do you think they'd want to? Why do you think it's like they think it's so susceptible here? Right. And I think it's because Europeans as a whole has come through, uh, you say, like a graduation level of like looking at their ancestry and their history as a whole. Uh, you know, Christendom kind of kind of does that to people and like and look at your sins, look at your past and sure. forgive it. Right. So these countries are kind of influenced and kind of look in their past and sins and something like that and want to be forgiven. And then you find um, groups that are not part of that group uh, prey on that sort of kind of predation on uh seeking forgiveness or seeking a way for make a penitence uh and they say they see these european countries doing that and they say well if i were to say i'm a victim myself i'd be i'd receive um extra money i'd receive uh you know um uh, ways of uh improving my my station in life hey i'm a victim of uh, your ancestors uh give me a job affirmative action uh, does that here in the united states right um, so, I mean, you don't find this happening in other countries in the world. You know, you don't find the Muslim majority countries this giving this kind of penance to uh, white people for their um, uh, Barbar- Barbara or Barbados uh, slave trade. They right. Slave like 1.5 million white uh, Europeans. Turkey used to enslave uh, white people. In fact, right. uh, I learned learned this recently is that uh, Captain John Smith was formerly a turkey a slave in turkey no when way he, when he lived there. i had no idea yeah and he had he had eventually he was too old to have been enslaved because he was like screw this i'm right. out yeah. so he <laughs> hit the guy over the shovel with the head and, and ran away no thanks <laughs> but you know you can see how so it's it's um they, and you don't hear turks you know right you don't see them going there's like it. hey uh this moment in our life and our culture past and our country's past or as a people, as a whole, uh, we condemn this. Uh, this sort of have happened, and yeah. we condemn it everywhere. You don't see that sort of stuff happening. They don't want to even admit to the Armenian genocide, right? Uh, you find um, like the Muslims in uh, North Africa, and when they uh, also enslave black people, they castrate them, right? You don't see any of them saying, "Hey, uh, we shouldn't have done that. We're sorry. Uh, you know, that's uh, it's a black stain." But you know, we'll continue to promote the end of slavery and stuff like that and, and good eco justice uh, sort of nature. But you find it now it's proliferating in Libya uh, and, and other parts of the world, right? Uh, so I think they find, uh, you can say maybe why like a lot of them are going to Europe right now is because they're harping on like their goodwill nature to want to help, to want to be good. And they're taking advantage of that. Right. Yeah. The, the guilt to, you know, the guilt uh, trip that you always get and it's it's almost like a lot of these people feel that they can be absolved of their guilt and their sins by by engaging in these these different acts, these forms of deference and, and uh, inviting people to just come to their country and then, you know, not not contribute to stay in their own neighborhoods and right. not, not uh, offer anything to the yeah to the community or anything. So it is it is a bizarre it, it's it's like they've taken the. Um, parts of Christianity and just and turn them on their head, you know, right? In, in a lousy, <laughs> in an unfortunate way. Yeah. I saw a picture of like these white people, <laughs> Europeans, um, like chaining themselves with a stick, stick or something, like neck to neck, saying like we're sorry for slavery or something like that. Right. Um, and of course, you see like minorities, like yeah, you should be, but like where's the minority that? apologizes for themselves for being in, involved uh, in the slave trade themselves. Like, where's um, the African-American that sold all their African-Americans to Europeans to come over here, right? right. right. Or still proliferate still in Africa, right? Where's the, the Muslim, right? A lot of people look at Muslims, like, again, it's a phobia, but they're one of the most world-dominated religions, largest group of people in the world. Where's their apology towards uh, the way they treated uh, the Seki people in India and the massacres of, like, uh, in the millions. Yeah. I think it's, like, tens of millions in India. And their attempt to dominate them. Um, 
So it's weird that this is only concentrated in European areas. And it, again, it's there's some money there. There's position there to be had. Right. Uh, this guy, uh, Harris, has attempted to pass this legislation uh, on the back of him being lynched. Uh, this will improve her odds for presidency, political power. Um, I think it's uh, not going to stop. I think at some point it's going to continue more and more because the left doesn't really care, even if it is fake. Yeah, they have a short memory. They have a short stuff. right, right. They'll just uh, find something else, right? To, to try to find something that does stick, even if they have to make it up. Um, and I think that's probably what's going to be the next one. They're going to make something up and try so hard to make a stick to, to kind of justify their kind of fail streak <laughs> they are going on right now. Um, and it's going to be pretty bad. It's going to be brutal. It seems like this all manifested in reaction to Trump, you know, and ever since he became president, there's just been this like newfound um, understanding. I mean, you got ladies calling you out in the street for being a Nazi and you know, no one ever said stuff like this before, <laughs> right. I feel. And it, so now it, it, so there's this. Yeah, there's this definite like newfound anger. And even during Obama's presidency, I mean, there was there were riots. I guess it's easy to forget. Right. But uh, there's so much. Hey, we were watching uh, MTV Classics TV uh, uh, channel. It's mm -hmm. a new TV channel. Or, I don't know if it's new, but it's relatively new. And uh, they were showing a bunch of music videos from like the 80s and 90s. And I was like, wow. Um, a lot of these music videos have a lot of black and white people in the same videos. And it just seemed odd because they were definitely making an effort like Tupac's got a white guy in his video and then Paul Abdul's got a couple white kids in her video. And that's not normally where you see white people these days. Right. In, in like Rihanna's music video, every single person's black. Right. And there's, so it just seems like we've gone, <laughs> we're no longer even pretending like we're going to try to be diverse in no. that sense. Yeah. Diverse now just means uh, anti-white. You look at like the Blank Panther that's going to be up for like, uh, I don't know, the Academy or Globe or something like that. Uh, and the news article that comes out in the headlines for this movie is that, well, what a diverse cast. And like, there's no white people in it. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's another way of saying uh, anti-white. Um, when they look for diversity, that's another way of them saying we just don't want Europeans here. Uh, you look at BBC uh, and the things that they put out there. Uh, you have like this Rome episode or like uh, it's on Netflix. I haven't watched it. I don't refuse to watch. I look at the cover. <laughs> I see a black guy being Achilles. I was like, that's just wrong. Uh, it's like trying to put like a, a white guy trying to be Martin Luther King. It's like, look, Europeans have their culture. Africans have their culture. Want to make a movie about the mythos of Africans. I'm sure there's like the Mansa right. Munsa, right? It was like one of the richest people in the world, they said. Yeah. Uh, make a great story. They have their own uh, myths and mythology and stuff like that. Like great stories out of that. It's like it's not non-existing. Uh, but like yeah. to like blackwash uh, European uh, culture, it's kind of weird and wrong. Yeah. Uh, but it's also especially like a history of BBC being a government propaganda machine right. and trying to, I'll say, dissuade people from like, what is history? A lot of people don't even know their, <laughs> their history and trying to make it seem like at some point like Achilles was a black guy or there were or like uh, there's like uh, interracial mixed uh marriages and trying to show like there's like a black officer in the roman legion you know in, in britain or something like that um i think that does a disservice to uh, uh africans and in their own mythologies and their own culture and their own crazy stories that they have to share um like black panther that's right you have nothing to be proud of from your own culture so here's you know this guy pigeonholed into yeah this, you know, yeah this, yeah cover that up that's right basically what it's saying even though there's that's you know that's not true obviously, right so. they did a great job with the black panther movie yeah right yeah that's yeah. a great comic book character that they created a great city mm -hmm. uh and blast off into like marvel dome um like but in these other areas bbc has like this anti-white policy diversity policy if you're gonna have a like a, a video, like I'm pretty sure eventually they'll do like something like British history. Like uh, at some point they make like a black uh, William Wallace, I'm sure. Because uh, the thing is, I think they have something like you can't have a white guy without there being a black guy. Kind of you mentioned like in these MTV videos, you can't do this sort of stuff without right. a white guy in there. Uh, and that seems to be like the direction they're trying to go for like diversity for diversity's sake. Yeah. Uh, and just so 
being uh, true, especially BBC. The government is supposed to showcase like historical stuff, facts, like <laughs> to see clearly this is propaganda. Right. the The question about, I guess, like with those music videos, it was an attempt on their part to say, like, "Hey, here's everybody working together. We're all a big team. You know, this is not, like this is this is working." Um, whereas, you know, when you're talking about history, it seems like. If you're talking about William Wallace, we know who that was. We know who was living there on this island at this time. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, there were, you know, they could talk about some of the real incidents when um, uh, the real historical nature of Africans living in, in Britain at the time. Right. You know, which w- probably wouldn't have been like, you know, as pretty, but it would be, it could make for interesting, uh, you know, documentary or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm not saying. Black people can't play these parts. Have fun. You know, these are these are fun stories. You know, <laughs> if you're going to like a, a cosplay or a Comic Con, yeah, great, have fun. <laughs> but like in the way and the position that BBC has and trying to portray itself as being true and historical and factual and trying to pass it and forcing people to pay for the T V license to watch this sort of stuff and, and prop up this yeah. propaganda machine. I think it's horribly wrong. Um in a way it kinda makes it uh uh, you can find um, more adjustable towards uh, their own country taking over. Like, look at Ireland. There's like this passage of a bill to import like 20 million or something like that Muslims yeah. uh, into a, an island, a small island, right? Um, you know, so that's, we'll definitely have demographic changes in the future. Right. And for a country that, for Ireland, that was so gung ho about hating, I mean, I, I, one of my coworkers, she said that uh, her husband is uh, English, and she said that in the seventies they had a vacation home in Ireland. They, um, he he didn't typically try to talk to people. He would have her talk because she's an American. He would have her talk to the local Irish people because during that time, if you were English, they might attack you. And uh, there, so there was so much ethnic strife. We don't want those people coming to rule us. Yeah. And yet, and yet today, the Irish, you know, would be willing, yeah, to import all these people, and um. It's not clear whether those people would contribute, you know. <laughs> right, right. Nobody ever says, "Look at Japan. There's not enough white people there. There's right. not enough Muslim people there." Right? It's usually just European culture, which is kind of weird. I mean, that's kind of like the late leftist hate machine, right? A hatred of white uh, and and kind of it's destruction of it because um, maybe they're looking at, um, I don't know, you could say more. Uh, easier, controllable populace. If you import these kind of people, they promise them a lot of welfare. Uh, you promise them okay. a lot of uh, government uh, money and advances. Uh, and the left, since they have their absent of uh, arguments of their own, they have to import people to kind of persuade them to do that. I think this is their way of, I think they want ultimately, they perceive that in the future we're all going to be you know, mixed. Right. Uh, and in the long run, I'm sure that will be the case. And yet, so this is, if you don't like, if you don't like this though, they'll, they'll accuse you. Well, you don't want, you know, you don't like uh, mixing of different, like, well, no, that, <laughs> I mean, they do, that even, they do that even today. They say, well, if you don't date uh, a Latino, it's because you're racist, right? If, <laughs> if, if, if you don't date a black person, it's because you're racist. Like, you know, this is sexual preferences, right? right? They're trying to even put in there, if you don't date um, a uh, transsexual, uh, you are transphobic, mm-hmm. right? Like, no, people have different preferences, right? Sexual preferences. And so that's another sneaky way how they're trying to dominate uh, and trying to make you feel guilty just for being you and just for having your own preferences, right? Things you even like. Yeah. So uh, damn you for things you don't like, damn you for things you do like, right? Right. Um, and that's, uh, I find, against the whole umbrella term of cultural Marxism to kind of disrupt and destroy uh, Western civilization. And, like, people are going to do what they want to do. Right. And some people will choose, you know, and, and these are all things that the state doesn't need to be involved with. Uh, it's so weird how the state is like, no, no, we like this this grouping, we don't like that grouping. Right. You know, and we're going to come up with a bunch of guilt, you know, you, you know if you don't do what we... And, and to subsidize it. Right. And so that's this. That's the scary part is when the state is involved with right. encouraging these. Babies. Let things go naturally in his own path, pave his own course. <laughs> right. The whole state of uh, trying to like like wolves, like the way they trying to treat chihuahuas. That's kind of like what the state kind of wants to do to humanity: create more obedient chihuahua tax slaves. The one question: We'll work. We'll vote. Work and vote. 
uh, and just uh, as long as they're getting you know resources from other people, that's good for them. Right. The the and you, it's interesting that you mentioned that work and vote because yeah, working you you begin to wonder about why it takes a forty hour work week, you know, and uh, it's that's so important to the to the way the government works and operates because there has to be income that you you know they can tax. And um, I think it's a long term. That's like something you see more of. Um, it's just this need for people to work, even when there's more technological innovation. Right. Um, that will cause people not to have to work as much. Right. <laughs> uh, the efficiency along like, like the work hours have gone down over the past hundred years. But you find um, now with the increase of taxes, uh, you have to work uh, like a third of the year is to pay taxes. Right. right? So all that work <laughs> going straight to government. Um so yeah, you could find then maybe a cause to like rebel. Hopefully that'd be a cause to rebel. Um, but you find places in Europe, they're kind of, I don't know, uh, lethargic to it. Just yeah. let themselves be taxed to oblivion for it. In France, like they, they have three month vacations or something. Right. <laughs> this stuff is not going to work. So I think that's a good cover of Smullet. Um <laughs> You know, Hopefully that becomes a verb someday. <laughs> yeah, he really smulleted this one up. <laughs> he did a full smullet on this one. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's don't smullet yeah. yourself, man. Like, don't hurt yourself. You know, <laughs> um, you know, you're, you're uh, like you're taking it too hard for yourself. Like, dude, no need to smullet yourself. You yeah. know, to take it easy. <laughs> um, you know, things things will get better. Or like someone who thinks like they're under such tremendous pressure or weight or depressed like but you like you look look at all this like great stuff around you like don't yeah. smell at yourself you know yeah don't uh you're fall persecuted on. yeah somehow. don't self persecute yourself man yeah i love that <laughs> <laughs> there it is we started we it right started here, here. <laughs> <laughs> so with that uh with those uh who are listening uh let us know what you think about hate crimes if they should be prosecuted as hate crimes and until then stay liberated and get off my property. <laughs>